morning, Lompoc. Good morning, Lompoc. Happy so, Wednesday. Happy hump day. Yes. So good to have you guys here. If you notice or you watch on Monday, my face is, the swollen is way down. It's um, a little back, bit back to normal. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's nice. I do have a root canal scheduled today for 1130. Yes. That should be fun. So, so exciting. Looking forward to that. Uh, but I'm glad to be here and so glad that you guys are with us today. Yes. Uh, if you don't mind, we have an exciting show today talking about some history at the Lompoc Theater. We're excited to talk about space and SpaceX. Today we're sp sending astronauts. It's a historic launch today. So Not please Lompoc, share but it's a, share the it's show with exciting. your friends. It's Help them wake up with some good news. Yes. And then, uh, and then yeah. right after the show go on um we'll, we'll, we'll share right it afterwards after. they moved the time to about one o'clock oh afternoon. really we'll i just checked it uh, new update oh yeah. okay well good to know and maybe I someone can like correct 30 us 30 minutes ago so excellent astronauts going to space today yes yeah Anyway, so we've got a couple little updates we want to talk about. Yep. That's well, right. and we're now in officially in phase three, so we can get haircuts now. And I hope that gym's open soon because Ugh. I'm feeling very fluffy. So Not so much <laughs> we'll here get, anymore. We'll get there pretty soon. Yeah. Um, and then we, we do have an update about the show. So we want to keep the show going. We are just getting so much enjoyment out of this. You guys have really helped us get through yes. this shelter in place for the last couple months without going insane. So... But in order for us to be able to maintain our work life and um, and the show and a little bit of free time, um, we're going to start canceling Wednesdays as of next week. So, so oh my gosh, we're <laughs> not shutting down the show. The idea is is that we have to we have to pay our bills, so we have to right. work our regular uh, job a little bit. That's such a bummer. And it is good news that we have some business coming in because a lot of people have had their businesses really fall off. So. Yes. We're very fortunate, yes. but we want to put a little bit more energy and research and into editing Fridays. into Monday and Friday's yeah. show. There are so many great stories and history to talk about here in Lompoc. Yeah. Uh, we just want to make sure those are rich and vibrant and that we don't wear ourselves out. Yes, or so, dilute the show by doing So what do you do, do on Wednesdays? Week. You catch up on episodes that you haven't seen yet. Uh. We're on ep This is episode 26. Yep. So that's 26 episodes at, at least half an hour long. Yep. Um, so yeah, there's lots to catch up on. So yeah. thanks for your understanding with that. Please continue to share with your friends, but it will become Monday and Friday. And if we can pull it off, we'll keep it going for as long as possible. Yes. So that's the update. And then I came across this video on Reddit, and I think this just perfectly describes 2020 so far. Um, this is just pretty insane to me. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I, I don't... I mean, this has been us, really. I mean, it's impressive, but we have been doing this for the last wait for it, folks. Few months. I mean, this is this is not easy. We're gonna figure this out. Gosh. I got one leg of stability here. <laughs> I got this. He, he, I think he's 2020 got it. is my year. He's like, I, I can do. Oh, a uh, little on. balancing act, maybe. Take the gamble. Hey, let's lose some stability. I can do this. Sometimes you gotta take a risk. This. Gotta take a risk. Uh, Come on, go for it, buddy. Yeah. Oh, oh, is, oh. It doesn't always work out. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, oh, man. Anyways. So, anyone think, else's 2020 felt like that a I little bit? I think that's been 2020, yeah. really. So thank you for bearing with us all. <laughs> yeah, and don't climb on a bed that's really tall. Yeah, uh, absolutely. But yeah. restaurants are back open again. So yes. um, we've, we've seen a few posts of... Um, People enjoying their time out. There's Good Aaron Crocker and his little tiny Father girl. daughter She's lunch so date. Cute. A little brunch Breakfast. date. Brunch date, I think, yeah. And then Mia Moray's open. Yay. This was them for serving their first guest that walked in. That's really exciting. Yeah, I'm so excited to go we out need to, to eat. We I think we're going to go out to eat, eat yeah. this weekend. And no, then Valle's sure open. They've got a gorgeous patio. We should give Brad a few bucks. He can go out to eat too. Yeah. Maybe visit a restaurant. <laughs> Brad doesn't make any money though, so. Uh, he's not, he got royalties. Brad needs to have like a brand ambassador job opportunity coming so up in the future. Is Jolie so looking if, for a job? Or if opening? Bacardi is looking for somebody, this is Brad is your man. Um, but anyways, we hope to get out to the restaurants this weekend and get a bite to eat and not cook at home or order in. So we're really excited about that. If you're going out to eat and uh, you have a great time at the restaurant, remember two things. Be very patient with the staff. This yeah. has been overwhelmingly crazy for oh them to gosh. shut down a restaurant and then jump back to being open and try yeah. to figure out service. So use some patience, use yeah. some kindness. And number two, if you've got a few extra bucks, don't tip the way you used to tip. Remember, yeah. these places need the help and... Um, 
uh, servers, that's a really tough job. So yep. if you can, hook them up and uh, share your appreciation with them. They'll be very, very grateful. Yep. And be sure that. to follow their rules. A lot of restaurants are posting guidelines about wearing masks when they when you come well, in. You're supposed to mention that. So it is, according to the county and the city of Lompoc just oh, adopted it as well, yesterday. it's mandatory to wear a face mask now. When you're out in public. Half of the people say this is a great idea, and the other half of the people just like to argue about it and say it's a horrible idea. We're not going to take a position on that, but just respect the rules when you can. If a, if an establishment ask you to do something, it's not because they're trying to set the rules. Yeah. They're trying to follow the rules. So don't make it about them. Don't make it about you. Let's try to do the right thing if you can. Yeah. If you want to argue about it, no problem. That's, that's, yeah. We've been doing that we, as a country for a long time. We still don't have enough time. information either. So oh. at the end of the day, I think what's important to remember is that all of the employees at these places are wearing face masks all day, which is awful. So you know, have a little bit of grace with them and just try to follow their rules when you can. So, well... Not when you can. And we're not, <laughs> if you're wearing a mask, remember the idea is not necessarily trying to save yourself. It's trying to protect some of the vulnerable yeah. because some of us healthy folks, if we had it and didn't know it, we could be asymptomatic. We could cough or whatever and put some of those droplets into the air. All right. Is mask going to save everything? Maybe not, but yeah. please be considerate. All right. We'll step off our soapbox now. Okay. <laughs> um, and speaking of food, there is a food drive. We've been talking about it already, but yes. uh, it is this Saturday. Yes, this Saturday. So let's not pass this by. The The local food pantry, Lompoc Food Pantry, they're going to be doing more and more cooking for folks to help feed the hungry. Um, so if you can, there's six spots to drop off some food uh, for the homeless or for the people that need some help. So and let's you were going to try that. to get out there this Saturday? Yeah, well, I don't know if I can make it, but Brad was considering uh, oh. maybe going to one of those spots and for an hour or two and helping people... Um, Make sure they donate their stuff. Perfect. Or picking up stuff. So if you if you have an idea, you have some extra cans or some food, maybe message us and we'll see if Brad can run over and pick it up. Yep. So don't forget May 30th, this Saturday. Yep. And we wanted to celebrate a local nurse who yes. just celebrated how many years? She's retiring after. She said 1976 is 1976. when she started. 1976. So that's At Lompoc Hospital. Three years yeah. at Lompoc Hospital. 42 years. She started, I so, think, when she was 18. This is... um. Tess Hain there on the bottom right. When they were building the hospital. So it's about 10 years ago. She's there on the right. And there she is on the left here. All over, actually, really. <laughs> yeah. And then, so it says 38 years of service. That's just in the, what are they called? The OB? In the OB. Yeah. So she was helping to deliver babies starting in 1983. Yeah. So think of that. 1983 to now. How many babies? Uh, she can't keep count but she's uh, she suggested probably thousands so we had a great interview with her and we're going to play that interview on friday yes um it was just so cute and it's just she um, is adorable and she is just such a great positive spirit to lompoc it was our first time meeting her and you could just feel her energy through the camera so um we really enjoyed our conversation so we're going to have a full interview with her yes. on um friday but we did um have her in our little we um we put together a little video um about memories from the lompoc theater and we want to keep that going we think that the theater is an important part of lompoc I think arts and culture could be the yep. center of the downtown in the future and um, she had some memories that she shared about the theater as well. So we'll have that um, coming up in just One a few minutes. One note about her and uh, the Lompoc Hospital, and this is just a personal point of pride for me, um, one degree of separation. Yeah. She started work at Lompoc Hospital in 1976. I was born at Lompoc Hospital in 1979. Look how I turned out. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I don't think she had anything to do with my delivery, but um, the fine folks there made sure that I made it to the planet yes. alive. And... Um, I'm in decent shape. So yeah. thank you to the Lompoc Hospital for all their hard work for all these years. Very so, exciting. Yeah. What a what a way to go out for retirement, right? For the last two months, yeah. having these just we asked her about that because you know so. you're you're winding down. It's the last couple <sighs> of uh, couple of months, and you're looking forward to retirement. And then the pandemic comes. Oh my gosh, oh, man. I can't and imagine. Great stories, such a positive attitude, and uh, yeah, we're addicted to her energy. So. And then you found so today. Again, big historic space launch um, that is going to be at the Kennedy Space Center in um, Florida. Yep. And Kennedy. that was supposed to be at 915, but the update is now. Yeah, I think they said around, and someone else can correct me. Uh, I think it's around 115 today. So well, but that. it was at uh, Eastern Time. Yeah, it said 433 was... Eastern Time was the new oh, update. Okay. So that's either 133 or 1233. Yeah. Somebody can... Uh, 
type it on there and make yeah. sure that we get it officially correct. In but the this version. is the um, the first manned space spaceship launch yep. on a brand new spaceship yep. since 1981. I think that was the Columbia, mm -hmm. and then this is the first one that they've actually sent men into space from U.S. soil since, uh, since, since 2011. 2011, yeah. So this is so pretty So for historic. all of us kids that always, everything was just about um, space shuttles and astronauts and over and over and over. Yep. When I was growing up, that's all we talked about and thought about. It's just really exciting to see the next wave of the future. And these are the um, astronauts, yeah. right? That are going to be these on there. These are two guys. Today, they're, they're risking it all, going to be on top of a yep. rocket. This is uh, Robert Benkin and Douglas Hurley. And they're they're aiming for the International Space Station. This was a photo um, taken, I think, last night, uh, just of the uh, the day before the launch. So anyway, that'll be super exciting to check into. Yeah. And then there's also a um, space museum on base that unfortunately yeah. we have access to, but they so, created a really cool virtual. This is insane. So uh, this is from Vandenberg Space and Missile Technology Center, which is also known as SAMTEC for a lot of you folks. This is a museum they have out there that you, some people could get access to, but now with the new rules and COVID, there's this 360 virtual tour of this amazing museum. Uh, you can walk around, you can see everything, you can click on stuff. You're like, that looks cool. I want to learn about that. All of the information is there. It's multimedia driven. There's history. There's videos of old launches insane you can get lost in here so um, if you have a little science kid or a kid who's interested or a big kid um, in all things space and vandenberg history this is awesome this is really really That's really, really cool, cool. Yeah. thanks for finding that yeah so if you're um if you're curious where to find that on facebook it's again type in vandenberg space and missile technology center or samtech or just type in vandenberg and it'll probably pop up so, yeah anyway that was super cool yeah i really thought that was awesome and then, um, like I mentioned earlier, we want to continue to celebrate the theater. And a lot of people have a lot of memories of the theater yes. from way back when. And so we wanted to share those. And if you have a memory that you would like to share with us, please send us a message. Mm -hmm. We'd love to interview you over Zoom um, or in person. But we, we just want to start to compile those because we think that the theater is a really important place. Do you want to talk about the some of the photos that you shared of the theater first? Sure, let's get those out of the way. So uh, it, the theater just has a ton of history. There's a couple of um, older shots. So Rex Allen, famous cowboy, he was here in Lompoc. Uh, this is in the, probably the 40s, most likely the 50s, um, when a lot of the kids that are now talking about their memories were um, going to the theater. So that's pretty cool. What's the next one there? Well, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, why, why are we so interested in the theater? When Michelle and I moved back to Lompoc in 2012, one of the first things Michelle got involved in was jumping on the board of the Lompoc Theater Project. And I was doing a few things with the city, and we were just trying to make a difference. And slowly but surely, uh, while she was there, it was so exciting because the group went from a really dirty rundown. That was, that was me. This was the there. first time walking through the theater. Um, this is the condition it was in, and that was... There's just this overwhelming Wano everywhere, and they've come so far uh, to get it to a. Pl so this is still towards the very beginning when all the pigeon poop was everywhere. And this is what it looks like this now. This is where it's it's cleaned out. Yeah, um, it is structurally sound. There's no earthquake issues, so it's it's cosmetic and a few additions to make it a functional space. So we're just we're hopeful. They've done a ton of work. Yeah. They we, still they still need to raise funds. Obviously yep. this is kind of a difficult time to do that. Yep. Um, but we are hopeful they have a new roof on the building that'll last five years. They've got tenants in the building. Yeah. So they are they don't have any debt. So it's a it's a clean slate for the theater and I think it'll get there eventually if we need need to continue to remember them and support them. So before so. we play that video, this is a kind of a new fun format. So yeah. with the memories. So as you see this, and we're going to post it as a separate video. If you're like, I remember, I remember going yeah. and seeing whatever, Star Wars or something. We're looking for you to talk about your memory. So look at this format. If you know of a memory you have or someone that might have lots of memories, um, connect them with us or connect with us so that we can possibly include you in this idea. So enjoy. My grandmother's half brother was Earl Calvert, who the Calvert family owned the Lompoc Theater all the way up until a, a few years ago when they were able to sell it. So Uncle Earl 
always hosted the Saturday afternoon matinee at the downtown theater. And he did that for a couple of decades. My mom even remembers that when she was young, he hosted the Mickey Mouse Club down at the theater. So that would have been in the 30s. And then the, he hosted Saturday matinees in the 40s and the 50s. And a Saturday matinee when I was a kid meant that there were two, it was a double feature, uh, 25 cents or something to get in. And then you had a ticket stub that when you went in, they tore off part of it and put it in a, a cage. And then at uh, intermission, you know, he did a drawing. He would have some kid from the audience come up and do the drawing. And you got, I won at one time, you got like a couple dollars worth of whatever you wanted from the snack bar. Wow. And I, um, I had come for, it was part of a friend's birthday party. I must've been about seven or eight. And I won this, you know, so I immediately went to the snack bar and just got cashed it in on all this stuff. And I ended up throwing up. In the <laughs> theater. Cause I ate so much crap. <laughs> and it was so, I was so horrified that I ran home. I ran home to Southeast oh my God. without stopping. Oh and I God. left a mess. But anyway, I think about that. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. I was finally able to go on a date with my husband. Um, we saw Gone with the Wind. It was the best movie ever because it was such a long movie and he had his arm around me. <laughs> so, the, yeah, the old theater was wonderful. It was so wonderful for us kids. I mean, what was it, 25 cents? It really wasn't that expensive, you know, like it is nowadays. But, uh, you know, you saw the kids from the community there and... So, you, you know, you had to mind yourself because, you know, they tell your parents for sure. Right. <laughs> Jules and I had very good memories in there. Very good memories in there. When they first started talking about the renovation of it, uh, I, I did a lot of photography back then. And then they had a tour through there. And I remembered because right on the inside, they had the camera that was used up there. Uh -huh. When I saw that camera, I was taken back because I used to go up into the booth and learn from the guy that was running it. And that's the last time I saw that camera was 1966, 1967. So I didn't realize that until I saw the camera in the lobby that I used to, the guy taught me how to use that camera. I'm not totally sure of the movies that we saw. We just knew that it was 50 cents for two movies and some cartoons. Mm -hmm. That I do remember. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I grew up in that theater. Uh, I remember very clearly uh, the Saturday matinees. Your parents would leave you off at like 11 in the morning. Uh, there would be a double feature. There would be a cartoon. And... Earlier on, there was actually a serial with it, like Buck Rogers, or I forget the Western that they had. And it was like every week, there'd be a new episode. So you'd keep coming back every Saturday. Um, and they wouldn't pick you up till three or four in the afternoon. I mean, it was like the cheapest babysitter in town. You would be there, you would be there with your friends all day. And for 50 cents, you could get into the movie, get popcorn and a Coke. My mother drugged me to a movie when I was 10 years old that I didn't want to go to called The Music Man. So we went and I missed the first, I don't know, 15 minutes, saw it and just fell in love with his performance. I just was like, oh, I can't even describe it as a child. It was like, I want that. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is, but that. Yeah. I want to be like him, not a shady salesperson, <laughs> a performer like him. And so I made her stay and watch the next one, and we watched the entire one. And from that point on, I was in the fourth grade. From that point on, I decided in, that, in my life I wanted to be an actor. So that theater is the reason. One of my most treasured possessions is a Polaroid that my mother took on the Lompoc Marquis that has popcorn on it, which is a feature film that I directed. It was one of the last things that was ever shown at the theater before it closed. Oh, my gosh. And so uh, Porky's played there. Huh. So uh, to, to have grown up in a town, to go to this theater, to these matinees, and then to have your own work up on that screen is, is an experience that not everyone gets to have mm -hmm. in their lifetime. And it's 
remains a seminal motivating force for me. So cool. So that was Mark Harrier. He's the president of the Lompoc Theater. He doesn't live in Lompoc anymore, but his heart is still here and he is still fighting for that theater every day. He's been on the board for six years now, I believe. Yeah. Um, least, and yeah. just pushing, pushing hard. So. And if he looks a little bit familiar, that's because he's kind of famous and he's not just been a director and an actor in the movies Porky's mm -hmm. as a child. He's in Bosch, and if you don't, it's on Amazon. It's a big he series, and he's, he's the captain on Bosch yeah. in the last two seasons. Yeah. And I think moving moving forward. So, yeah, just so great that as busy as he is, he still has time to think about Lompoc yeah. and um, his history here with the theater. And again, we're all hopeful. Yeah. Just keeping it on your radar so that as Lompoc rebuilds and figures itself out, that we don't forget about arts and culture and um, yes. the future too. So. So yeah. next, I wanted to put together a little recipe video. I have been eating like so much crap. <laughs> I'm sure we all have, right? And I, I'm craving sweets now all the time because I've been eating sweets so then I crave sweets. Gains 1.7 pounds, no, the world is ending. No, that's not true. Well, that's why I'm always wearing black now, right? Um, and so I wanted to put together a little recipe for a healthy-ish sweet because I can't just go the whole, you know, what is it? So the, she she's made a dessert sugar -free to make sugar free thirty day thing. So to make me suffer and be healthy. Yes, but it is so good. So this is a little um, stone fruit crumble. You guys can do this at home. All right. So the truth is, is I have been eating a lot of candy. I have eaten so many gummy bears, more gummy bears, I think, in the last few weeks than I've eaten in a year last year. So I'm starting to feel a little bit fluffy and I still have a sweet tooth. So as I prepare for my beach body, which I hope will be coming in a couple months, I'm trying to find solutions that are going to satisfy my sweet tooth, but also not pack on the pounds so much. So today I'll be making a white nectarine and yellow peach crumble with mulberries. And the mulberries are courtesy of Emily Caceres. So thank you so much, Emily. Instead of using flour for my crumble and white sugar, I'm using almond flour, which has a little extra protein. I'm also using some flaxseed in there. I am using brown sugar, but not quite as much. And I'm adding different spices like ginger in order to make it a little more interesting. Now, the amount of sugar you're using is all dependent on how sweet your fruit is. So I highly recommend that you buy your fruit from farmer's markets because it's always going to taste better when you buy it local. You can also use any type of fruit to do it. So you're gonna need a little over two pounds of stone fruit for this, and I used about a cup of mulberries. And I'm just going to chop those up so that they're bite-sized. Definitely taste the stone fruit first. So lemon juice if it's too sweet, or more honey if it's too sour. Add two tablespoons of cornstarch, or if you have arrowwood starch, that works great too. Next, I'm adding just a little bit of honey, about a quarter cup of honey. I'm going to toss that together. And then pop that into your pie dish. For the crisp, I'm using a cup of old fashioned rolled oats, a half a cup of almond flour, a third of a cup of brown sugar, a quarter cup of flaxseed, a teaspoon of ground ginger, a quarter teaspoon of sea salt, a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. Next, add two tablespoons of non-liquidy coconut oil and four tablespoons of grass-fed butter that's been melted. Then I'm just going to toss that together and place that on top of my crumble. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees and cook it for about 35 to 40 minutes. You'll know it's ready when it's nice and bubbly. It's great if this is served warm or it can be reheated the next day. And I'm just going to add a scoop of my cobbler and then I have my Greek yogurt here, which I just added just a little bit of honey to. I think it's just a really nice balance of crunchy, salty, and sweet. Look at that. It's all gooey too. I love the goo. <laughs> Real good. So that was it. It was actually You're surprisingly cute. delicious. Shut up. You're so cute. What does <laughs> um, fluffy mean? 
it means like just, we're all fluffy yeah you know, even Lori just said, a little, we're all just little bit fluffy. soft like i even notice it in my neck but um but yeah and even if you if you have a nut allergy you can do whole wheat flour instead mm -hmm. if you have a nut allergy and you're gluten-free you could probably do one of those gluten-free flours yeah. i haven't tried that and if you really wanted to get extreme you could use that monk fruit sugar sweetener mm -hmm. instead of a brown sugar for the crumble but you do need sugar because it's it rot versus a liquidy uh, sugar for that so I thought it was really good. And the Greek yogurt on top, I love I love sour and salt mm -hmm. and sweet. Yeah. I like them all in my mouth at the same time. I just love the hands. <laughs> just love the hands. So this is the honey, uh, the brown sugar over here. Oh my gosh. And the crumble. I'm getting really hungry. And then hungry. the fruit underneath. And then you get this little bit, anyway. Uh, it's really, really tasty. Yes. And if you've been eating nectarines, white nectarines, yellow nectarines, the same old way, yep. they're really delicious, And they, but you're a little bored, Chop them up, throw it into a crumble yep. like that. Why not? And it's I delicious. peeled the peaches, but I didn't peel the nectarines because I started to, and it was just too difficult. But I think if you have peaches, you Rustic. probably want to peel them because yeah. the fuzz and the you, you don't want a hairy. Crumble. And then you might get them in like your teeth, like in between. So yeah. yeah. Anyways, it was really good. So check it out. Yeah. Try it if you can. So that's still, it's probably going to be my breakfast. So yeah. you guys can all be jealous, <laughs> or you could go to Route One Farmers Market on Sundays. There's a yes. guy there that has. A awesome stone really, fruit. Really Those white awesome. nectarines from there are the bomb. He has white peaches, yellow peaches, white yes. nectarines, yellow nectarines. But the white nectarines are better, which I yeah. shouldn't be saying because then you guys will just buy them all. So yeah. anyways, I think be that's fair. our show. I think so. So let's just to recap real quick. Uh, so Friday is our next show. We're not having happy hour this Friday night, but Friday morning at 830. Yep. We're going to pack it full. So again, we're going to be talking with uh, nurse Tess, Tess Hain about retirement from Lompoc yes. Hospital after delivering thousands of babies since 1983. And fascinating conversation. We need to spin the wheel for him. Oh. Brad needs to spin the wheel for the cocktail. Or, w Brad's well, not here. Brad's not here. I'll okay. do it for him. Okay. I'll do it for him. Or how about I do it? Okay. Or how about I'll hold it like no, that? Yeah, you hold it just like that. Hold on. There we go. Okay. And this is the, uh, I'm going to do this for Brad, uh, but we're spending to see what kind of cocktail recipe Brad is going to make uh, on Friday. Right? So I will pretend to be Vanna. Okay. Also close to Hannah White. Yes. <laughs> All right. Are you guys ready? Any favorites? Okay. I Good see luck. a Negroni on there. See if you think. All right. Here we go. Only one spin. One, two, three. <laughs> Negronis. Negroni. Excellent. We're going to make a Negroni on Friday. We'll have to make it more interesting than just a standard Negroni. Well, it's Do Negroni you know is a fun name. Do you know off the top of your head what a Negroni is made I, from? Yeah, it's an Italian thing. No, but what's I don't want to spill this. I don't remember you off don't the top of my head. Okay, it's gin. It's gin, it's gin based. Some, but gin there's different and variations. Campari. I've had Negronis with mezcal. Uh, I've had... So there's lots of variations. Okay, all right, I'll give you that. that. But yeah, Campari, you've got a little bitter elements. Some yes. people use Amaros. Some people use natural herbs. There's yes. all kinds of different ways to make it. Yep. But Brad, let's see what he comes up with on Friday's Negroni's uh, Negroni recipe. Yep. Should be interesting to yes. say the least. Is he wearing new clothes yet, or is he still in? I think he's. I think he's still in that. Are jean, you letting him wash his that, clothes? Yeah, here? that okay. jean vest. So yeah. that's that's about it for Brad. Yeah. So. so anyway, that's on Friday. So tell your friends. Don't forget to share. If you guys are loving this show and really enjoying it, and it's the thing that you wake up for, um, imagine there's a few other people that you might know that could enjoy it too. Yep. We can't tell everyone about it. We can't share it with everyone, but you can really help us. So yes. as we transition to Monday and Friday, and we'll get the updated time too. We're gonna. Well, we're I gonna think work we're gonna stick with eight thirty at least stick with through that? summer, yeah. and then we'll probably start it a little bit earlier yeah. um, once kids go back to school. We'll see how it plays um, out. But if you think that the show needs to be earlier, if you're getting up way too, way earlier in the day, and I don't know, we're, we're remember, open, we're flexible. And remember, we've asked this question before, and there's been a, a variety of answers. So we ultimately know that we can't please every single person and not Don't not every single person that, yeah. will see our show live yeah. but we want to remind everyone that just because you don't see it when it's live, it's archived immediately afterwards. So you can watch the show anytime during the day. You can watch it on YouTube if folks aren't on Facebook. So we try to make it as accessible as possible. Yes. Yeah. So, so thank you so much for watching us. Thank you for all of your messages that you've been sending yes. us. It makes makes our We got a day, message this morning so. from someone we didn't know. Yeah. And they said it was like a say? breath of fresh air. Ah! It just, it, yeah, it's like soul food. We so love you guys. Thank you guys for all of that. Thank we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank we you, Lompoc. We love you. Friday. And here is your moment of zen. Thank you, Jacob Cole. Mm -hmm.